Well, good day there, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve. Welcome to another episode of the Typewriter Video Series. Today, I'm going to be answering a real simple question that some of my new viewers have had, and that is, can you do a video about changing typewriter ribbons? And yes, I can. I'm surprised I haven't really covered that in all the episodes that I've done of this series, but uh, let's go ahead and talk about changing typewriter ribbons, shall we? Well, you know, it's been said that changing typewriter ribbons or knowing how to do it is sort of equivalent to knowing how to change the oil in your car. And that might be a pretty good analogy, although in most of uh, the Western world, you can pretty easily find a place to change your oil for you, and it's usually more convenient than doing it yourself. But in the case of typewriter ribbons, there's not that many typewriter shops around town or around your town or city. And so it's a good thing to know how to change uh, the ribbon in your typewriter. It's not really practical to have to drive long distances or have to ship the typewriter to somebody just to get the ribbon changed. Knowing how to change your ribbon is a real practical part of being a typewriter owner and user. And another good question to consider before you go out and get a ribbon is what kind of ribbon are you going to need? Are do you going to want a solid color ribbon like a black or dark blue or are you going to want a bichrome or two color ribbon? Typically the red and black is the most common in those colors. Are you going to be buying ribbons already installed on the modern plastic reels or are you going to be buying bulk ribbons from certain suppliers and rolling your own ribbons? I'm not going to be covering the topic of rolling your own from bulk supply perhaps in the future but I'm going to be discussing mainly about replacing ribbons with new plastic spooled ones that you can get today these days uh, newly manufactured a most common source of ribbons that I've found to be is online online suppliers and what I mean I typically will buy from Amazon uh, I'm sure there's other office supply places that sell online uh, one uh, though a local supply of ribbons I've found it's not always reliable but at the big box office supply retailers like Office Max and Staples, for instance, in my area. Occasionally, if you go to the computer printer ribbon section of those stores, they're going to have a little red box, a brand called Porelon, P O R E L O N. And if you find the Oki Data printer, ribbon. It's going to be essentially the same as a uh, cloth typewriter ribbon and the spool is generally compatible with most typewriters. But you're better off going I think with a online supplier getting the universal type of replacement ribbons. So should you have a single color ribbon or a two color ribbon? If you are going to be using the typewriter for a lot of serious writing, a lot of writing, it's best, it's most economical to have a single color ribbon, black or blue, whatever the dark color is that you typically would write with. And the reason why is once you wear out the top edge of the ribbon, you can flip the spools over, essentially flipping the ribbon over, reinstall it, and use the bottom edge of the ribbon and get twice the usage out of it. Whereas if you buy a bichrome ribbon, like for instance the black red variety, um, you won't typically get a lot of use out of the red. Most people don't type that much in red. And so you'll be wasting the red ink and your one half of the ribbon, the black half, is going to be worn out and you'll have to throw it away with the red still good. So uh, unless you're doing short, shorter pieces like things where you might want to highlight certain words in red, like maybe you're a typewriter blogger or you just like to write letters not that often, you're not writing a whole voluminous uh, novel on your typewriter, but a letter now and then and you like to have some color on it. Hey, get yourself a bichrome, a two-color ribbon then. A lot of the typewriters that I've found commonly available, the ribbons thread up through the machine in very much the same way. There's a few models that are different, however. Now, in my collection, and that's all I'm going to be talking about are the typewriters in my collection. I obviously can't show you the ones that aren't in my collection, but in my collection, the Underwood is the one that has the different orientation of spools from all the others in the or the direction that the ribbon comes off the spool and the way it threads up on the vibrator, and I'll show you that later. But uh, generally, if you have a typewriter that's already working, the ribbon is already working, and you, you just want to replace it, it's a good first idea to take note of the direction that the uh, ribbon is coming off the spools and uh, take a photo with your phone or whatever, a close-up photo of the way the ribbon threads up through the vibrator just as a reference point. Now if you buy a, a, type, a used typewriter at a, a you know antique store or thrift store, 
it may not have the ribbon threaded in the proper direction, in which case you're going to have to just use a little common sense and maybe some of the guidance I give you today might help you. Now speaking of typewriter ribbons, uh, there is a universal, so-called universal kind of replacement ribbon and the spools have a central hub that expands slightly, kind of spring-loaded, and it'll fit a bunch of different typewriters, but there are several uh, notable typewriter brands that these universal spools won't work on, and that is your Olivetti's. They need a wider size hole in the middle, and some of your Remington typewriters, uh, like the Remington 1040s and those kind that were made in Holland, they take a their own spool that has a wider sized hole in the hub. Now if you happen to have a newer Remington or Olivetti that has their own unique kind of spool design, you can take a universal type replacement ribbon and save your old spools from your typewriter, pull off the old ribbon, discard it, and then take the fresh ribbon from the new universal type spool and thread it onto your old spools. Save your spools and reuse them that way. Other than that, most of the other brands should take the universal spool. Now, if you get into the really old upright typewriters, standard typewriters like your Royal Model 10s or whatever, they have metal spools, they're custom spools that have the auto reversing mechanism built onto the bottom of the metal spool itself and you have to save those spools and reuse them so on those typewriters you're going to take a modern plastic spooled ribbon and you're going to thread it onto the old original spools okay with that let's get into showing you how to replace the typewriter ribbon well, let's start with a 1950s Smith Corona Silent. What you're going to want to do on this one is first of all lift up the ribbon cover, but before you lift up the ribbon cover, make sure that the carriage is moved to the left side far enough to permit the ribbon cover to lift up freely without scratching the cover, okay? And you're going to have your two spools right here, and you'll notice on the Smith Corona spools, the ribbon comes off the back of the spools. So you're going to want to take the old ribbon off of the typewriter, and I usually start at the vibrator, the central part of the, the typewriter. I will first set the bichrome color to the red position. And then you're going to want to take two of the center keys like the G and H and push them together gently enough so both type bars are jammed together and it causes the ribbon vibrator to be in the raised position, stuck, if you will, stuck in the raised position. From there, we can remove the ribbon from the vibrator, unthread it. And on these Smith Coronas, and a lot of typewriters like it, the ribbon is going to thread through this metal guide and then behind these two central guides and then back through this guide. And the way you get the ribbon off of these guides is these two outer guides are kind of like loops and there are slots in the back side of it. So you're going to want to like pull up on the ribbons and then pull them through the cutout in the back of that loop like that to remove it. These ribbons as they peel off of the spool they go through a little guide here that has a slot in it and there's one on each side. The ribbon has to go through that guide. That is your auto reversing mechanism. That's what does the auto reversing of the direction of the ribbon and so you're going to take both spools out just pull them off their posts like that and you'll make note that on the bottom of the spool there are four holes. In the bottom of your reel mechanism there is a, there is a little raised pin. And when you put the new spool in onto the central shaft, you want that little pin to go into one of these holes in the bottom of the ribbon spool. Here is the central shaft that the ribbon spool goes on and this little pin that's protruding next to it that has to go into one of the holes on the bottom of your ribbon spool. So when you've removed the old ribbon spool and if you're simply replacing the old spools with new ones then you want to go ahead and set your new spools onto the shafts 
making sure again that that pin on each one is down in one of the holes on the bottom of the spool and you'll tell it by the the post should be barely protruding above the ribbon spool on these Smith Coronas and then you want to make sure that this little guide that with the slot in it make sure the ribbon is going through that guide and make sure that happens on both sides okay just a clear look of at the vibrator without the ribbon you have the two central guides right here where the ribbon has to go behind them and then the ribbon goes through what looks like a flat loop these two outer ones are like a flat loop and there's a split in the back of the loop where you put the ribbon in through so I'm gonna take the ribbon I'm gonna put it behind the two central guides the two protruding ones there and then I'm gonna try to the top edge force it through the slot in the back of those flat loops pull up on it and then pull it back down so that the ribbon is now riding into both of those flat loop like guides and from there take up the slack on your ribbon like that and then you can drop your two tight bars down and the ribbon should fall back to its normal position and then you want to set your uh, bichrome selector back to the black setting which is normally what you'd be using put a piece of paper in it and test it out now those of you veteran typewriter people out there will notice that I've already ignored a very crucial aspect of it and I wanted to mention it only afterwards so one of the things you're going to have to be conscious of is when you get the new spools one of the spools is going to be almost empty of ribbon and you're going to look for this grommet there is a grommet near the end of your ribbon and this is your auto reversing grommet and when you thread this end of the spool when a spool onto your machine you want to make sure that the grommet is toward the spool and not inboard of the auto reversing guide what i mean is don't thread up the ribbon so the so the grommet is to this side of your auto reversing guide the little guide with a split in it you want to put the grommet toward the spool the shaft of the spool like that this little grommet is what does the auto reversing for you so i usually will wrap the grommet onto the spool a couple turns and then I will thread the ribbon through the little split guide and then get the spool down onto the shaft and making sure that little pin engages the hole down there so again your auto reverse guides make sure the grommet is outboard of those guides and this is what it looks like when you don't have that bottom pin engaging one of those four holes. You don't see the central shaft of the system poking up through the middle of the hole of the spool. So I want to pull up on it and turn it a little bit until I can engage that little pin like that. So if you've done this right, the ribbon will come straight off the spool nice and vertical like through the metal frame the housing of the uh, ribbon spool cover it'll go right through the split in that auto reversing guide it'll go right over to your vibrator go through the vibrator it will be behind or toward the platen in between the two central guides of the vibrator and it'll go off to the other side the same way as this side so here is a brother this is a Webster XL 747 again I'm going to move the carriage to the left to give me room to pull off the ribbon cover and this is a bichrome ribbon this particular typewriter setup is very similar to the Smith Coronas in the general sense that you have the spool you have the two guides the guide looks a little different it's actually two vertical pins and the gap between them is your gap where you thread the ribbon for the auto reverse guide uh, the ribbon vibrator on this one looks very similar the ribbon has to be threaded in the middle part of the vibrator it has to be toward the platen as it is now but you'll see there is like a slanted slot on either side and it has to go around the back of the frame and come out the front of that slanted slot on either side to the spools now there is a feature on these spools that's a little different that's not present on the older Smith Corona 
And that is, there is a little spring-loaded arm right here, and that is designed to keep the ribbon from getting loose and spilling out into the machine. And so before you pick up and lift up on the spool, you're going to want to pull that little spring-loaded arm out of the way, and then you can pick it up. And there is a pin system in the bottom on this plastic wheel. This little pin right here is just like that metal pin on the Smith Corona. It has to engage the bottom of the spool. But this particular brand of universal ribbon, instead of having four holes, it just has these pie-shaped sectors. And you just want to make sure that pin slips into one of those pie-shaped sectors on the bottom of the spool. And it should sit in there nicely. It's actually easier to replace on this particular brand because it does have those pie sections. And it sits down in there nicely like that. And then you just release that spring arm and it should go back right into the middle of the ribbon there and hit it nicely. And again, make sure your ribbon goes through the auto-reversing guide. It's actually easier to thread this a little bit on this brother than it is on the uh, Smith Corona. And then in the ribbon vibrator itself, again, let me raise the tight bars. Uh, again, it has to go through the front of these slanted slots and then into the back behind the central part of the vibrator so it's closest to the platen. And of course, after you get done putting the cover back on, go ahead and take a rag, a cloth dampened with some window cleaner maybe, and wipe off that excess ribbon ink from your typewriter. And here's a little Olympia SF. So you, again, you want to move the carriage to the left enough to now allow you to raise and remove the ribbon cover. And it has a very similar layout as the brother that I just showed you. The ribbon vibrator is very similar. It has the two central guides, and then it has the two outer guides that are like loops. But instead of it being like the Smith Corona, where the split in the loop is, is in the back of it, the split here is in the front of it, this gap right here. So it's actually easier to see how to replace it. And on the spools, it has a very similar kind of slot system in the auto-reversing guide. You want to just make sure the ribbon goes through that sl slot. And it also has the spring-loaded arm that keeps the ribbon from spilling off the spool. So to pull off the ribbon, you want to just pull that spring-loaded arm out of the way. And again, there is a pin down here on this plastic gear that has to engage in this different style of replacement ribbon. There are six little gaps in there, like little spoke gaps. And that pin has to engage one of those gaps in there. And on this typewriter, I notice when you're putting the spool into place onto the shaft. It helps to guide the ribbon through the slot in the auto reversing guide first before you put, you slide the uh, ribbon spool onto the shaft. It just makes it go on a little bit easier. Well, here's a Hermes 3000. This is the model from the 1970s. So again, you're going to want to slide the carriage to the left so you can pull off the plastic ribbon cover. It's going to have a very similar system to the others. You'll notice that the ribbon vibrator looks almost the same as the Olympia SF. You have two central guides. The ribbon has to thread behind it. The two outer guides are like a little open loops and the ribbon threads into it. It goes right through. Again, you have auto-reversing guide with a slot. It goes in right easy. And the spools themselves have the spring-loaded arm feature like the others to keep the ribbon from spilling out. You just want to push the arm out of the way before you lift up on the, the ribbon. And again, the metal base plate underneath, like this little sprocket, has a metal pin that you have to engage the holes or slots in the bottom of the spool. I find the auto-reversing slot, there's kind of a, a wide taper and then it narrows down. And it's really easy to put the ribbon in. It's not nearly so difficult as some of the others. So it's pretty much made to be a little more ergonomic. Okay, now that we've talked about the more standard kinds of typewriter uh, installate, ribbon installations, let's talk about one of the little more uh, different ones. And this is an Olivetti Underwood 21, which is similar mechanically to a Studio 44. It has a, um, a cast uh, aluminum lid. It has a different setup. The, the thing that's different about the Olivetti's is the spools have a nut on them. And let me unthread the one on the right side here. And you don't want to lose these nuts. So the central feature of these nuts is it has this collar, this tapered collar, below the actual knurled nut. And that collar goes into a hole on the top of the ribbon spool, 
right here. And so your universal ribbons won't fit these Olivetti's generally. You have to buy ribbons that has the spools that has a wider hole in the top to accommodate this little flange, if you will, whatever you want to call it, like a flange on the bottom of the knurled nut. And when you thread that nut, and yes, the shaft is threaded, the shaft that the ribbon spool fits on is threaded, and you thread the nut on, that little flange on underneath it fits into that hole of the ribbon and holds it in place. So that's the main difference between the Olivetti's. The other difference is, on this one, is when the ribbon peels off of the spool, when it unwinds, it goes around an outer guide out here. And then it goes through the blades of your auto-reversing guide back here behind the spool. Then it goes across to the uh, vibrator and then back to the other side. So there is an extra guide that you have to thread this, the, the ribbon around like that, around the back side of, and then through the split in the auto-reversing guide like that. So there is a wide gap in the vibrator where the ribbon fits behind closest to the platen. And then you have these two flat loops. The ribbon has to go into the front side of the loop and then behind the inner part half of those into the middle. And there is a split on the outer part of that loop, which is you can't really see because the ribbon is obscuring. But there's a split and that's how you get the ribbon on and off that guide simply by pulling it up and getting it out of that split. But pretty straightforward other, otherwise. So installing the metal uh, ribbon cover is a little tricky on these Olivetti's. If you flip the ribbon cover over, uh, underneath it on the back side of the cover is this uh, little protrusion. And there's a curved molding right here. And this little curved thing has to go un underneath it like that. So you set it like that on both sides and then the front of the ribbon cover, this front will snap down onto the springs. Now some of your Smith Coronas from the 1960s like this Galaxy 12, the ribbon cover articulates backwards. You simply pull it back toward the keyboard and it stays on the machine. I don't know if I really like that. It's sometimes it kind of gets in the way of your hands, but there it is. You certainly can't lose it. <laughs> and uh, the ribbon vibrator on this is pretty straightforward. Let me show you. holding the ribbon in the raised position here. It's actually really super easy to change the ribbon on these. There is a two sets of prongs on either side that are kind of just pinching like that. And you just pull them up, pull the ribbon directly up like that, right off the prongs. To reinstall it, you just want to stretch the ribbon so it's tight and kind of feed it down onto those, between those prongs like that. And there it is. There's auto reversing guides and it goes right onto the spool as the others do. So some of your uh, old machines, pre-World War II machines, don't have a regular removable uh, typewriter ribbon cover. They have individual covers on each spool. This is a Underwood portable from 1930 and the way these Underwood spools covers come off is you pinch it like here and then the inside part raises up and then the outside part there is a little tang that fits into a slot and you just pull it off like that. Sometimes when you have ribbon feeding issues on these older machines, it's sometimes good just to take the spool covers off when you're actually typing, especially on something like a, a Corona 4. But anyways, let's take a look at this. Put it to the red position, raise some type bars up together. So, the ribbon is pretty Standard, this is a universal type replacement ribbon, but what's different about it is the direction that the ribbon is unwinding from. Instead of the ribbon winding off through the back of the spool, it's coming off from the front of the spool toward the keyboard, through the split in the auto-reversing guide there, then to the vibrator, and then to the other side. Now, the vibrator itself, the same basic principle applies as to all the others. You have two central guides, and the ribbon has to thread behind those close to the platen. But what happens next is the ribbon goes, there's like two triangular 
guides on either side on the outside here. The ribbon threads in front of the inside part of the triangle, then through a slot and behind the outside part. And the split to get the ribbon into that, that flat loop is the split is right here, right here and right here. And so if you look at the outside of this triangle, this slanted edge, that's the edge that the ribbon itself sees. When the ribbon is under tension, it kind of peels at an angle, it kind of folds at an angle off that slanted guide behind it. And that's how you know you've got this thing correct. And again, the basic principle here is, again, the middle of the vibrator, the ribbon usually goes behind the middle two parts closest to the platen. And again, what's different about this, you have the ribbon peeling off the opposite side of the spool toward the front of the typewriter, toward the keyboard. Again, the same thing happens. You have a little metal protrusion here, a pin that has to engage a hole or a slot in the bottom of your universal spool when you're installing it. And then to reinstall the ribbon covers, and you'll know it's oriented right where it says UT, and that's not University of Texas, that's an Underwood typewriter, but you start on the outside, put the tang in the slot, fold it over, and make sure the ribbon goes through this gap in the cover, and then this little protrusion goes in the slot like that. Well, that's a good way to get your fingers nice and dirty. Make sure you clean up your typewriter a little bit of window cleaner and get the ink off the body panels after you change your ribbon. Well, that was a fair representation of most of the typewriters in my collection. I have 20 typewriters, I think. I didn't take them all out, but that represents the vast majority of them. A lot of the typewriters, the ribbon vibrator systems work very, very similar. The little flat loop guides, they're, the gap in it is either in the back or the front, and almost always the ribbon goes behind the two central parts of the vibrator closest to the platen. Uh, the one outlier in my collection as far as the spools themselves is again the Olivetti's. They have a different size hole in the middle to accommodate that nut that has the flange on it. And so when you do order typewriter or spools, typewriter ribbons, make sure you, if you're getting an Olivetti, make sure it's for the Olivetti's. And again, as I mentioned earlier, the Remington's that have an extra wide gap in their spools as well, you're going to have to get a Remington spool for those. Well, I hope this was informative for you guys. hope this uh, answered some of your questions. If you do have any further questions, uh, drop them down below. And until next time, you guys have yourselves a great day.